Let's explore At Your Service and 10 other spiritual poems. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi. Today's first poem, At Your Service. A tale is told that a student was brought to Lama Trungpa. I'm told you have difficulty meditating. Come, let us sit. As they did, the student felt his blockages to meditation sliced asunder, like untieable Gordian knots beneath the blade of Alexander the Great. And when that is what you so desire, I am at your surface. Today's second poem, Facts. I am a revealer of sky treasures, or teraton if you prefer Tibetan. Often in the early morning, it looks as if I'm speaking to empty space, to imaginary students who are not there. As the words tumble out of my mouth like a human fax machine. Today's third poem, The Essence of the Tao Te Ching's First Chapter. The path to enlightenment is paved neither with consistency nor convenience. It is good to recognize our desire for such things, and then of them let go. The author of The Book of the Beneficial Way, or Da Te Ching, if you prefer Chinese, sets a dichotomy between being and nothing, reminiscent of the noticing and letting go practiced in Buddha's meditation. Our task is not to lobotomize our brains in hopes of stopping the onslaught of thought and emotion, for I have never seen a Buddha statue holding a hammer and all, no less a hacksaw and an ice cream scoop. Noticing both thought and passion is the path of mindfulness, and relaxing into our release of them is wisdom's path. <clears throat> like two sides of the same coin, noticing and letting go are each subjective and ever-changing, lending themselves to uncertainty, the key that frees us from the prison cell of preconception. Today's fourth poem, Copper. We are told that oil and water cannot mix mechanically, but chemically we can bind molecules of water and oil together with copper. And when we do so, we get plastic, which is a carcinogen. Just as oil and water cannot combine without forming a poison, every time we blend fear and love, we wind up with something quite poisonous, toxic, and destructive. But don't take my word for that. Ask Padme Amidala. Today's fifth poem, Batter. As I sat in the airport terminal performing mantra meditation, I turned my head and noticed through the window. The morning dawn had created cotton candy of the clouds. Doors swung open, revealing a chain of mountains, comprised as if of thick pancake batter poured from an enormous bowl from a considerable height. Today's sixth poem, Armed. She stalked the planet, determined to control the world around her, armed only with the power of her annoyance. Today's seventh poem, Nature. A little red convertible whipped into disabled parking. Its sole occupant, a young woman of robust health, 
bounded out from behind the steering wheel. Excuse me, ma'am, what is the nature of your disability? He asked. She flipped him to bir the bird, to which he replied, Oh, I see, it's psychiatric in nature. Today's eighth poem, One Look. Big nose, brown eyes, thick curly hair. People take one look at me and ask, Where's the bagel? Today's ninth poem, Understandable. I love my neighborhood, and I am resistant to leaving. I love my neighbors, and I am resistant to them leaving. And while, yes, these feelings are natural and quite understandable, that does not stop them from being destructive. For there is no stress that cannot be made worse by simply resisting it. In today's tenth poem, Virulent. This Buddhist contemplative sits before you, triggering your preconceptions concerning emotion and its origin. For our assumption that thought and mind are the architects of emotion is built upon the shifting sands of an ignorance of evolutionary biology. For without the meat of our primate forebrain, there can be no complex thought or belief. The majority of mammals are not primates. The majority of mammals are incapable of complex thought or belief. Yet, they display the same higher emotions as us, such as empathy and love. Without the meat of our of a midbrain, no animals are capable of higher emotions. Thus, the majority of reptiles, bereft of midbrain or forebrain, are incapable of higher emotions and experience only the lower emotions of basest survival, fear and greed and hate. These lower emotions are found in those neurologically incapable of complex thought or belief. Therefore, to use thought and belief in an effort to deal with lower emotions, which are utterly independent of thought and belief, is an exercise in foolishness. Like Admiral Moti, hurling insults in the face of he who delights in psychically strangling others through the dark side of the Force. What will you do? Will you squander your time and energy debating the merits of thought and belief in the battle against the tyranny of lower destructive emotions? Or... Will you exercise the emotional humility and the intellectual curiosity required to learn how to access the body's factory-installed tools to deal with even the most virulent of lower emotions? Today's eleventh and final poem, Glorify. Congratulations, you are a great, big, strapping fellow. But tell me, if you can, how, a, how assaulting a crippled pacifist will remotely glorify your imaginary Prince of Peace. Let us conclude with a simple call to action. This podcast will never have any advertisements, so support us monthly on PayPal and like us on your podcast service to help others find us just as you found us as well. If meditation has felt impossible, boring, or just out of reach, you are welcome to register at buddhajoy.org for the next series 
of live online meditation class webinars that meet once a week.